So we're going to ask everybody to go ahead and uh, mute yourselves. That'll be on the lower left corner area of your screen. While I do my uh, brief presentation. Okay. Welcome everybody. This is our third Zoom gathering and um, I've had a lot of fun so far. I hope you have. And tonight we're going to talk about research and artifacts. I'm going to show you some extremely unusual artifacts, uh, some of which have ended up in my books. Just to introduce myself to somebody who might be uh, new that, that has just tuned in, uh, I'm Robert Maycumber, and I'm the author of the 14 novels in the Honor series. The 15th Word of Honor is coming out in October. That's only four months away. I'm excited. And I'm also a lecturer that specializes in Edwardian and Victorian world history. Um, I normally do about 70 to 80 events around the world. Due to the situation now, we're doing it by Zoom to keep in contact. Um, I want everybody to please stay in touch with me. I stay in touch with you many different ways. You can stay in touch with me via my website, at robertmaycumber.com. That's pretty easy. My quarterly email, you can get that, comes out appropriately, quarterly. It's a newsletter that tells you where I'm going to be, uh, when the next book is coming out, and some other tidbits about my work. And also my Facebook page. Um, I try to answer every single email and Facebook message I get. And between my email and my Facebook friends, that's 5,000 people around the world. But I make a point out of it because you know what? It's one of the fun things I get to do in my day. So I love that. Um, a quick reminder to everybody, during our Zoom gatherings, no discussion of current politics or situations, please. Also, as I said before, everybody's muted. Click on speakers view and you will see who is speaking. And for my presentation, hopefully that will be me. Um, if you talk or you cough or you make a noise, you will be on speaker view for dozens of people around the country. So please try to be uh, as quiet as you can. Now I think at this point, let's start with our Tuesday night toast as we have so many times before. Tonight we have a wonderful Washington State wine from a vineyard that I visited in the Walla Walla Valley. Yes, this is a Walla Walla wine. I love it. Walla Walla wine. And it's Canoe Ridge. And Canoe, this is a 2017 Canoe Ridge. There's the image of it right there. And uh, here's the actual bottle. And I have, I think, a particularly enlightening toast tonight. It comes to us from 3,000 years ago. Yes, this is the toast from the famous Roman senator. You know the last name, but you might not know his first and middle names. Marcus Tullius Cicero. Yes, it's ringing a bell now. Here's the toast, my friends. A room without books is like a body without a soul. That's good. Canoe Ridge, Walla Walla Valley in Washington State. Now, we're going to move on and give uh, the talk about my research first. There are two kinds of research. There's academic research and there's locale research. Uh, for my book projects, an academic research uh, usually takes about two to three years. Um, during that time, I read about 50 to 60 books on the subject. Uh, and collect various uh, materials on it. I consult various people. 
Now, where do I get my academic research from? I get it from uh, government agencies, military organizations, universities, libraries, websites, the National Archives, readers' donations, get a lot from readers. What do I get from all these places? I get memoirs, government reports, military reports, media reports, charts and maps, uh, other books, the reference books, uh, and in sometimes period novels that are contemporary to the, to the situation. In addition, I have a really cool team of experts. They are also readers. And as we all know, I am so blessed that our readers named themselves Wakians after the main character in my books and Peter Wake. And so the Wakians, among the Wakians, there is a group of Wakians we call the Smart Wakians. Now that stands for the Subject Matter Advanced Research Team. S-M-A-R-T, Subject Matter Advanced Research Team. These are people that have some skills, some of which are really arcane, some of which are uh, fascinating. However, when I'm working on this book project, they come in handy. How do I know they have these skills? Because they let me know. They hear what my next book is going to be about, and they, know, they let me know, hey, I know how to do something that might help you. For instance, I know how, because of the smart team, I know how to tap into a 19th century telegraph cable. Now, how many other kids on my block know how to do that? I know how to pick a 17th century Swedish lock. The Swedes were the uh, foremost locksmiths in Europe at the time. I also have learned martial arts including saber fencing. I talked about that on my last Zoom meeting. And military tactics, uh, period appropriate. I also have uh, a person who is a celestial, uh, well, actually she's an astronomer, and she does the celestial historical research. And uh, many of my books have this, and my books are famous for that. Uh, so, uh, all these little things add up. There are many of them, including things like translating from foreign languages into English, translating documents for me, and code breakers. I know code breakers that have, that have worked for certain government agencies that are known by their initials. And um, I have gotten access, uh, carte blanche, into the historical code vault of one of those agencies, I actually do. I was just there this last year. And so I apply the codes. This code vault has codes from 1694 to 1920. Everything after 1920 is still classified. And I get uh, actual code systems. I have 11 that I'm working on on the book now, future book now. And this is a copy of one of the code books. To give you an idea, they had five digit code numbers. And in this particular one was uh, the code number for the subcode number 81, your instructional orders. Now that comes in handy. This is the State Department code from the Spanish American War. This is the War Department code from the Spanish American War. So this smart team really helps me a lot. And as far as the academic research, I want you all to know, you probably know this already, but I put my entire research bibliography in the back of the book. I did that starting in about the eighth book. There's a second kind of uh, research that I do, and that's locale research. And if you've been in the police service or the military service, you know the nickname for that and it's eyeball recon. When I write about these different places in the world, then uh, I go to those places, usually by ship. I immerse myself 
into the culture and the language and the place, and there's no substitute. That gives me the flavor of history. And the academic research gives me the facts of history. I can better describe things more vividly with more detail once I go there. I've got some artifacts I want to show you. Uh, they are from around the world. Many of them have found their way into my books. I actually have far more than this, but we're trying to keep this short and sweet. So uh, these I take home with me from my travels, and they give me an appreciation of their weight, their texture, their ease of handling, their sounds, their taste, their sometimes strange appearance. And the first one I want to show you is a weapon that ended up in a dishonorable feud. This is a blowgun. This is a real blowgun. And this blowgun uh, actually works. This is the part where you blow through it. And then it comes out this end. This is the dart. Uh, this is actually surprisingly accurate. Uh, I, it's, it's basically a wood sliver, and it's surprisingly accurate. Now, this, this little ball here, which is actually a small gourd, has natural cotton in it. And on the natural cotton is poison. Now, not in this one, but in the, in the wilds, natural cotton in this that's impregnated with the native poisons. It's the poison that gets you. So now we're going to go on to my second artifact. The Kuna Indian used this and uh, impress Peter Wake quite a lot. This weapon comes from Southeast Asia. Melee Cree. This is a hunting and assassinating assassination knife. It's a, it's a large dagger. It's, of course, in the book Honors Rendered. And the, these are real boar's teeth. Now look at this weapon. This is, a, this is a nasty weapon. It's nasty because of the kind of blade that it has. Look at this. Now this does not stab you or slash you clean. This ends up creating an open gash. Uh, it literally rips your, your, uh, your flesh apart. And there is also a point right here that they can use to deflect anybody trying to stab them. This, uh, I had a little trouble with this, but I managed to talk my way out of the trouble. You come in contact with somebody from the Dani Santani tribe of New Guinea. Now, New Guinea was a German colony in the uh, time period of honors rendered in 1889. When I was with the Dani Santani people, we went on a hunt. Going on this hunt for a wild boar, these, by the way, are boar's teeth, and, uh, and when we uh, killed it, we killed it with uh, bows and arrows, and then we brought it back and we skinned it and butchered it and then ate it. I was uh, able to get this. They presented this to me. This is the breastplate of a sub-chief, of an elder. So whenever I go back to New Guinea, I can wear this. And as long as I'm with the Dani Santani people, I'm golden. When I was with the Dani Santani people, they asked me what I did, and I told them I was a writer. That took some doing. They don't have books. When I, when I told them I was a teller of stories, they go, oh, we understand now. This is all through a three-way interpretation. So I found out my book, my, each one of my books would have been worth two cows. Here is another. This is from the Honored Dead in Southeast Asia. I know that some of you have been to Southeast Asia uh, during the war and maybe visited afterwards. This is a particularly nasty drink. I'm going to tell you up front, please never, ever drink this. 
This is really bad stuff. This is uh, cobra wine. And it's fermented cobra wine. And of course, you see the cover for The Honored Dead. This cobra wine also has all kinds. Of, first off, there's a dead cobra in here. I actually drank this because I was on a side creek up the Mekong River in central Cambodia. And the only thing we had left to drink was this stuff. All right. Now, my final artifact that I want to show you, I'm honor bound, uh, that was took place in 1838, Florida, the Bahamas. This is Martini Henry 57 caliber rifle from the 1870 Peter Waits rifle. If you have a question, now's the time. I got a comment, Robert. This is Ed Pinto. Hi, Ed Pinto. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I didn't realize you toast before you start these things. If, if you had, I would have used it as an excuse to break open that Mata, Mata, Matuska? Mata, Matuska rum, which I'm still holding shut and closed. very much. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the evening, everybody.